Hi everyone, and welcome to the channel. In this video, we're going to take a foundational look at the AWS availability zones and how you can leverage them to help achieve highly available services. Now, this is a video segment taken from one of my courses where we explore uh, availability zones in a bit of a graphical way. So let's dive in. So to illustrate the concepts of how we can leverage AWS's availability zones to improve our overall service availability, let's take a look at a very simplistic example. Say we have an online store that we want to run in AWS and uh, it requires six backend web servers to handle the load of our site. We know most of our users are in a certain geographic area. Uh, so we pick a AWS region closest to that spot. The region we pick happens to have, uh, say, three availability zones, AZ1, AZ2, and AZ3. And to help us out in this example, we'll uh, throw in a component called a load balancer. Now, I'm not going to get into the details here, but essentially this load balancer uh, will just distribute our incoming web traffic to the available backend web servers. Now, our example business is just getting going here. Uh, we have a new engineering team, and we just want to keep our design simple. So we run our six servers in AZ1. So our site's up and running, uh, things are going great, everyone's happy, um, but wait. Three weeks after our big site launch, some type of event caused these AZ1 data centers to go offline. At this point, we lost our entire capability to run our website. Disaster. But okay, it's our fault. We learned about the well-architected framework and the design for failure principle, and our design didn't really accommodate the loss of an AZ. We had all our eggs in one basket, so to speak. So we learn from that situation and decide to leverage two AZs. We now put three servers in one AZ and three in another. This essentially costs the same to do this. We're still running uh, six servers just spread out over two AZs, uh, but now we're protected against the failure of an AZ. Somewhat. If we lose AZ2 now, is that okay? Well, that kind of depends. In our example, we needed six servers to maintain our site traffic load. With AZ2 gone now, we lost half our capacity. Now, depending on the specifics of our site, uh, it may be able to handle this scenario temporarily, but it may not. In our example here, let's say we actually do need the six servers to handle our traffic load, and this AZ failure still caused some issues for us. Now, it wasn't as bad as before, uh, our site was still running, but a lot of users were complaining of it being slow and running into a lot of errors accessing our site, uh, essentially a lot of unhappy customers, and of course, lots of lost revenue during this time. Now, with the learning experience from this AZ2 failure, we know we don't like having half our capacity being unavailable. So this time around, we still wanna leverage the two AZs, but this time we run our minimum six servers in each AZ. So now we're in a much better spot, right? We have six servers in AZ1. So if either AZ goes down again, we still have our six servers available to us to handle the traffic. And the loss of the AZ is essentially unnoticeable to the end users of our site. But what's the catch here? Well, we need six servers. But to protect against a loss of an AZ, we now need to run 12 servers all the time. We have the six in AZ1 and six in AZ2. Our cost to run our applications in AWS is essentially doubled now. So what else can we do here? Well, if we take the same approach, but utilize more of the AZs available to us, the loss of a single AZ would have a lower overall impact on us. Now in our example, our region we pick just has three AZs available, but even still, this means we could put three servers in each AZ instead if we're trying to protect it against a, a single AZ failure scenario. So if we do this and put three in AZ1, three in AZ2, and three in AZ3, we're only running nine servers now, but we can maintain our full six servers in the event of a single AZ failure. Now there's many caveats to this, but in general, the more AZs you can distribute your workloads across, the lower the impact of an AZ loss would have on your overall infrastructure, and uh, you can also likely reduce the amount of over-provision capacity needed and reduce those wasted costs as well. Our upcoming courses will dive a lot deeper on these uh, multi-AZ design considerations and load balancers, but now you should have that conceptual understanding of how you may be able to leverage the AWS AZs to achieve highly available applications. 
And that concludes this quick lesson. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.